she comes across like diamonds, diamonds Easy in love when the lights are low She comes in to focus, focus The closer she gets, the more I know She takes more whiskey than my wine, I wine This one's going to be my last whiskey of the night I have done four already I started out with the Westland from um, from Seattle. It's a American single malt that was uh, aged in um, virgin oak. Next to that, I had the Writer's Tears Redhead triple distilled single malt Irish whiskey, which was very interesting. Um, after that, uh, I did have something else, didn't I? I will have to check. <laughs> the memory is starting to go. Yeah, I had the Westland, the Writer's Tears, and I had Old Pulteney 21. Sorry, I've had three so far. Westland... Writer's Tears, Old Pulteney 21, and now I'm going to do another whiskey that I have been coveting for a long time. I had heard about this but never seen it on the shelf. I think it came out four years ago. It was one of these Ardbeg special releases. And when I got to London last year, I went to... Uh, I met up with uh, Whiskey Jason. No, <laughs> I met him in Glasgow. I met Jason Whiskey Wise in uh, London. And uh, I asked him if it was possible to get a bottle of this. And he said, I know one place where they have it. And there was one bottle. It is this one. The Ardbeg Dark Cove. Now, when we went to this shop, it was called the Vintage, the Vintage House in um, in Soho, London. And fortunately, upstairs from this Vintage shop was the Soho Whiskey Club. And we sort of ducked into this. So I, I found this, or Jason showed me this. I took it off the shelf, and I was about to buy it. And then uh, Jason said, well, would you like to go upstairs and taste it? And I'm going, ooh, yeah. So the uh, clerk at the counter put it aside for me and uh, said, I'll hold it for you. So we went upstairs to the uh, Soho Whiskey Club. And I had some, I had an Achintoshan American oak or something like that, just to wet my whistle. And then I had this one, the Ardbeg Dark Cove. They had one opened, and I tried it. And it was phenomenal. Now that was back in March. Now it's January. I haven't tasted this for a while. I've just been holding on to it and it's got some dust on it and there are other bottles that I had in the meantime all the bottles that I had before this one are bottles that I acquired before this one I have this really anal first in first out policy where I open whiskeys in the order in which I acquired them this one cost me 109 pounds and 95 pence. So it's about two to one. That's like about 200, or I figured, you know, for argument's sake, about two to one Canadian dollars to pounds sterling. It's about a $220 Canadian. Well, when you've heard about something and you've been coveting it for a while, you don't mind spending over $200 on it. It's just one of those things. 
And I didn't mind spending that kind of money. Now I'm going to try it. I'm going to pour me a dram first, and then I'm going to read what information is on the box. And I believe there's a pull tab right here that I might have got my fingers on. This has been in the bottle four or five years, I'm sure. I've never seen it on the shelf here. Or maybe it was only available before I knew what I was looking for. Delicate little pop. Oh. Hold on, I need a clean glass. Okay, I have me a clean glass now. See, I made a mistake while tasting the last whiskey. I had put the clean glass to the front from like from over there. I put the clean glass to the front, but then I used it to measure a dram to put in my Highlands uh, whiskey. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, infinity bottle. So I I naturally put some of the old Pultney 21 into my Infinity bottle, and I used the clean glass that I was going to use for tasting this to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I told you what this costs, so I can throw the bill of sale away. The dark cove that I picked up at the vintage house the shop in Soho. I still have some... Uh, water. I might need some. Let's put the water in a glass. Oh, that's almost enough, but it will have to do for the tasting. Okay. Oh, wrong cork. Yes, that was an Ardbeg cork. That's the one that goes here. Okay. Let's pour us some of this Ardbeg Dark Cove. Only tasted this once before in London. Let's let it sit for a little while. What does it say on here? Okay. Its color is that of copper stills in moonlight. Its nose, dark chocolate. Oh, I'm not going to talk about that at all. Oh, something fell over down there. Darkest art bag ever, it says. Taste this whiskey and hide it well, for it is art bag's darkest spirit ever. Okay, I'm not going to taste the tasting. I'm not going to read the tasting notes. I'm going to read what it says. Here's what the bottle looks like anyway. Here we go. Here's the dark cove. Here's the, uh, the box. Okay. I'm going to read what it says on here. They crept through the woods under cover of darkness, feeling their way to the cliff edge. They clambered down to their secret hideout as they had done a thousand times before. But this time they were not alone. This time they were being watched, and it was the eyes of the law that were upon them. Even the villagers had a part to play in the subterfuge. At the sight of the approaching pony and trap, they snatched up their fiddles and accordion and launched into a raucous medley of shanties, which drowned out the hollering of the smugglers as they loaded their rickety vessels with aquavitae on the rocky shore below. Oh my goodness, it's a whole story. Oh, it was a moonless night with a fierce tide surging landward. The gang, having captured the lighthouse keeper and snuffed out the lamp's wick, sent signal to the black boats to come ashore. What fearless men these are that navigate without light and treacherous hidden reefs that extend from the shore like barbed fingers. Oh, I think I'm reading these out of order. <laughs> 
The cave would not be reached by land, so the men waited until the moon was full and high. Then they rowed out into the inky waters, risking life and limb to convey the cargo of peat and kindling jars and kegs to their hideout and food enough to sustain them until it was safe to return with the lucrative fruits of their labor. <sighs> Hardbag Dark Cove, I have a single malt. Take this whiskey and hide it well, for it is a, its heart has been matured in dark sherry casks, imparting waves of treacle toffee, okay, and a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to have to try that soon. The Ardbeg distillery lies on the most southerly part of Isla and on the rugged shores of the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, I've been there. <laughs> it was quite something. Uh, Shorty is the dog. Ardbeg, this is absolutely the best committee that I've ever sat on. Okay, great. I think we've seen all that before. Ardbeg was established in the year 1815, but long previous to that date, it was a noted haunt of smugglers. For many years, the excisemen had been searching for this most this nest of illicit traffickers without success. At length, the cove where they carried on their nefarious practices was discovered. A raid was made and the place destroyed after a seizure of a large amount of illicit spirit. As it was impossible to procure other vessels and finding their occupation gone, the whole band was scattered. The site of their apparition operations was shortly after occupied by the McDougall's founders of Ardbeg Distillery who chose it on account of the water. Alfred Bernard, the Whiskey Distillers of the United Kingdom, 1887. Smuggling in the blood. Fourteen years before John McDougall founded Ardbeg Distillery, it is said that his own uncles, Alexander and Alan, were apprehended on charges of distilling whiskey without a license, though the private location of their clandestine activities remains a mystery to this day. Less of a mystery is why John, having coupled his uncle's whiskey, or having sampled his uncle's whiskey, decided to establish his own legal distillery at the Rocky Cove where Ardbeg sits today, thus from a dark past creating the greatest legend of all, the untamed spirit of Isla. Okay, now that I've read all that, how much time have we used up? Probably about 10 minutes, if not more. Okay, here's my dram of the darkest art bag ever produced. Let's have a bit of water, which tastes a little bit like old Pultney. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Let's see if we can scare up any legs on this one. Slow to form. And once the big drops are formed, they come down still relatively slowly. Oh, this is heavenly. I get peat smoke. I get an intense sweetness from the sherry. And oak, sherry and oak.
and in smoke. Mostly sherry and smoke. Peat smoke and sherry. What's the ABV on this? 46.5. So every whiskey that I had tonight was around the same amount. 46% alcohol by volume. Ah. Oh. I'm getting chocolate, dark chocolate. Sweetness again. There's a maltiness and smokiness coming through. Sweetness with dark fruits. I would have expected the peat to be stronger, but it's it's balanced by that by the dark fruits, dark dark ripe fruits, figs, dates, prunes. Am I getting raisins so much? No, but I'm getting peat. Peat smoke, bit of plasticine, uh, oh what's that I'm getting, crayons, wax. Ah, some citrus, some lemony, limey citrus. As soon as you get past the peat, there's that telltale citrus note. If anything, now my nose is just filled with it. Is it possible to overdose on this stuff just by nosing? Oh. That is beautiful. Sherry and peat smoke. The peat smoke is... lemon, lime, citrus, and a little bit ashen, a little bit bonfire-y, a little bit of creosote. Oh, creosote. I love creosote. I rem I'm reminded of my dad painting the deck, or should I say staining the deck with creosote. I could just dive into this nose. Lovely, delicious stuff. This is what I was in for when I went to London. Now, after I tasted this right away, it was buy it on the spot, even though, like, it had been put aside for me. But, you know, when I came back down, yes, I'm buying it. And when I said, yes, I'm buying it, Jason Whiskey's wife said, if you don't, I will. <laughs> uh, It overpowers the nose. It just citrus and creosote and dark fruits and 
I'm going to taste it now. Mm. Oh. I'm getting coffee beans. I'm getting chocolate. I'm getting smoked fish. Oh, this is complex. Complex and delicious. The coffee beans and chocolate, it's like a mocha. It's like a chocolate milk. And then the smoked fish. Oh, this is special. I wish they'd make this again and put it in the core range. So I could just go to my corner liquor store and buy it anytime I want. Ardbeg, and this is this is the UK Ardbeg. You can see the UK on there. This is the one I picked up in London. Hard to believe I was in London. I'm still, you know, pinching myself a little bit about that. Now I'm getting more. The nose is changing probably because I've had a sip already. Now I'm getting some of those chocolate-covered coffee beans. Uh, the lemony, the lemony, limey citrus is still there. Uh, along once again with some... <clears throat> some of that creosote. Oily, oily creosote, lemon lime, citrus, coffee beans, chocolate covered coffee beans. Mm. Nice, oily mouthfeel, coffee beans, chocolate, and after I swallow it, smoked fish. Mm. And that smoky, slightly fishy finish hangs on and hangs on and hangs on and hangs on and there's smoky fish and there's uh, lemon lime uh, citrus hanging on and a little bit of coffee bean hanging on oh this is fabulous stuff Uh, when this bottle is gone, I don't know what I'm going to do to try and replace it. Wow. And I've heard that there's a new Supernova out too, but I don't know where I can get it. I've never seen it. Well, I haven't been to a liquor store in almost two months. Just because I spent so much on the BC Liquor Store Premium Spirits release. And I put it all on a credit card. And I've been paying that credit card off ever since. I only have a little bit left to go to pay off. And then I'll be buying whiskey again. But there's a kind of luxury involved when you buy whiskey and, you know, nine months later, 
you can uncork it and savor it and enjoy it. Oh, this is heavenly stuff. Wow. That makes two really wonderful whiskeys I've had tonight. Really above the average, far above the average. And those were the Old Pultley 21. And this Ardbeg Dark Cove. Really fantastic, fantastic drams. Oh. Slanchava. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. This had so much fantastic flavor, it didn't need any water. <laughs>